Hi, I'm Michael Fudge, and I'm here to provide you with a quick overview of Git. By the time this video is over, you should have a good idea of how to use Git in the simplest of workflows. We're only going to learn four commands. It should be noted that you can do much, much more than what you'll see here with Git, but our goal here is to just get you started with the basics, and most importantly, understand the commands that you're typing and what they're doing. So let's talk about Git in a nutshell. For our purposes, we're going to assume that it does four things. It does a lot more than this, but this is a great start for beginners. It tracks changes to the files in a folder. It allows you to decide whether or not you should track those changes in those files. It provides a complete history of the changes of the files that you decide to track. It's kind of like a universal undo button. It allows you to sync those changes to remote sites over a network. In a nutshell, that's what Git does. It does a lot more than that, but this is going to be good for now. Where does my Git repository come from? In most circumstances, such as in our IST256 course, your Git repository is in the cloud. In this case, it's on GitHub. The process of copying the repository is called cloning. With your repository cloned, it's now a folder on your local computer. We call the folder on your local computer the repository folder or the working directory. Git works by tracking the changes to the files in the working directory. This can be done on Windows, on a Mac, on Linux, and people with, di with different computers can easily work together, although we're not going to demonstrate that today. It's important to understand that Git uses a command line interface. Yeah, there's graphical tools that you can use instead for Git, but as a beginner, you should avoid these. You need to understand, in reality, how Git works before embracing these graphical tools. You must type the Git commands from within the repository folder or they will not work. If you are not in the repository and you're typing git commands, you'll get an error that says, this is not a git repository. The next concept you need to understand is that git allows you to decide which changes it should track. This is a concept called staging. The behavior is different from other version control systems and doesn't have value in our simple scenario. We will, will want to track all of our changes, so we will type git add double hyphen all to stage all of our changes. After the files are staged, we should commit them. This creates a history of changes by telling Git to record the current status of the working directory. You should include a meaningful message with your commit. It should describe the work that you did during that coding session. Finally, with our changes committed, we might want to send them to GitHub or any other remote repository we set up. The process of telling Git to take all commits and save them to a remote repository is called a push. When you push, you'll say origin master because we're only using a single branch called master and origin refers to the place where we initially cloned the repository. You'll only type git push origin master because in our simple scenario, we only have one remote and we only have one branch, the remote's origin and the branch's master. If you are working on git with a team of people or on multiple devices, you might need to get the changes from remote and put them in your local repository. This is the opposite of a push, it's called a pull. And again, we won't do this in this video. We learned about the three git commands, git add, git commit, and git push. At this point, you might wonder, when should I do an add? When should I do a commit? When should I do a push? Well, there's a fourth command that helps you understand when you should do what. It's called git status. It shows what's going on in your repository. For example, in the screenshot below, our working directory is in sync with our local git repository and the origin master. It says the branch is up to date with origin master and there's nothing to commit. The working tree is clean. Now let's suppose we go out and we do some work, we edit some files, we do some homework, etc. And when we're done, we type in git status again, and now you'll notice it says changes not staged for commit. This example tells us that we have things that we have changed, but we have not told git to track them. To tell them to track them, you type in git add hyphen hyphen all. If you type git status after you've staged the files, you'll see that you have staged the changes, but they have not been committed. We can type the command git commit dash m and then put in a message like, hey, I finished lab one in lesson two as our commit message. If we type another git status command after we commit, you'll see a message like this. It now says at the bottom that there's nothing to commit, but in the middle it says your branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. 
being ahead of Origin Master means that your local repository is newer than your remote repository. You reconcile this by saying git push origin master. So in summary, there's just four simple commands you need to use in this very, very basic Git workflow, and it's a good workflow to start. You can learn a lot more about Git as you master these four commands. First of all, when you don't know what to do, type in git status. It will tell you what to do. If you need to stage files, you type in git add hyphen hyphen all. If you have stage files and you need to commit them, you type git commit dash m, and then you include a commit message. Then finally, to reconcile your local Git repository with the remote repository on GitHub, you should use git push origin master. This concludes our quick overview of Git. Hopefully this will be enough to get you started. Thanks and bye now.